Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So last week, last Wednesday, the kindergartners led chapel here. And with Thanksgiving just around the corner, the, the theme for the day was thankfulness. I think it was thankful in all things. Uh, and their, their text, the, the text that was supposed to be the basis of their message, was going to be our gospel reading today, Luke 17, 11 to 19. The problem, though, as their teacher, Mrs. Beisert, explain, explained, was that to a kindergartner, Jesus didn't heal ten lepers, he healed ten leopards. <laughs> That's a completely different story. Uh, but anyway, so, so they picked a different text, but the theme was still the same. Thankfulness. Uh, the kindergartners lined up on these steps right here, and they had each drawn pictures of what they were thankful for. And Miss Beiser went from student to student, and she held the microphone in front of them, and they all held up their picture and, and shouted out what they were thankful for. And the, the very first little girl held up her picture, and she said, I'm thankful for unicorns. It was great. It was fantastic. And she went from student to student, and, and each student said what they were thankful for. And as you would expect, most of them are thankful for mommies and daddies and grandmas and grandpas, brothers and sisters. One young man, I think he was a young man, it may have been a little girl, but was thankful for the rainbow. That was, that was nice. Uh, and she, as she went along, she came to the last student over there in the, in the front, on the front step over there, and he held up his picture. And on his picture was a cross on a hill. And he said, I'm thankful for God. And that drew a lot of awes from the parents that were in attendance there, as it should. And that little statement got me to thinking, I'm thankful for God. He was thankful to God for God. And that's that's so different from the way we usually think of things, especially from the way the, the culture around us, around us thinks of things. It's even different than most of us Christians think of things. When he said that, it made me stop and think. And when I, when I read our gospel reading for today, it made me think of that little boy, the one Samaritan who went back to Jesus and was thankful to Jesus for Jesus. Nine or ten lepers had been healed, but only one returned to Jesus. The other nine kept going on their way, having been healed, but not having been changed. And today I want to contrast those two groups, the, the nine lepers who continued on their way and the one who returned to Jesus. The nine is going to represent the wider culture around us. And it's not a one-for-one -one representation. It's, it's very likely that these nine could have been God-fearing Jewish people. And it, so they, it's not an exact representation, but, but for today, that's how I'm going to lay it out for you. The nine represent the wider culture, and the one represents the faithful believer, the faithful Christian who goes to Jesus and gives him thanks. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to do the five W's. Who, what, where, when, why. I'm going to start with what because I think that's probably the easiest question for us to answer. The ten lepers definitely had something to be thankful for. They were all healed of their leprosy. You could say that they had, had received a salve for their condition. They all on the way to the priest had been healed, but only the one returned. And it just goes to show that God gives blessings to all people. The Bible says that, that, that God sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. Our catechism teaches that God gives daily bread to all people, no matter who they are, believers and unbelievers alike. So just like all of the ten lepers had something to be thankful for, today everybody has something to be thankful for. And tonight, tomorrow, uh, we're all, everybody in this country, many, many people, almost everybody, will be gathered together with family and friends and they'll be discussing the things that they're thankful for. 
Most of us, most everybody, will be thankful for, for material things. House, home, uh, cars, job, money, um, even friends and family are material things. And we should be thankful for those things. Just like the ten lepers, all ten of them were thankful that they had been healed. But like the one that returned to Jesus, we believers have so much more to be thankful for. Christians are given the same things that the wider culture around us is given. But we give thanks to Jesus Christ for the faith that he has given us. We give thanks to him because he has given us more than just a salve. Jesus Christ has given us salvation. Jesus not only salves us, he saves us. And this is what the one who returned realized. He realized who the source of his salvation was. Which brings me to who. Who are we thankful to? Or for you grammarians out there, better English, to whom are we thankful? I have no doubt that the nine who continued on their way were thankful for the healing that they received. The problem is that they had no one to thank, or they had someone to thank, but they thanked the wrong person if they thanked anybody at all. They didn't return to thank the one who applied the salve. They didn't receive salvation. Verse 18, Jesus says, Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? The Samaritan was the only one to return. Like the little boy at chapel last week, the Samaritan was thankful to God for God. He was thankful to Jesus for Jesus. And this might be the biggest difference between the wider culture giving thanks and the Christian giving thanks. The Christian knows, absolutely knows, who to give thanks to. The wider culture, I'm not so sure they do. Sure, they give thanks to, to the people around them, the doctors, the nurses, police, firefighters, friends, family, and they should, we should, give thanks to those people. But ultimately, all thanks is due to God. He is the giver of all good things, but the wider culture can't, doesn't, <clears throat> excuse me, doesn't realize that. We have unbelieving atheists in our, in our culture who know that they should be thankful, who know that they have something to be thankful for. The weather, for instance, who do they thank for the weather? At best, they thank those around them for the, for the gifts that they've been given, for the, the things that they have, the possessions they have. But at, in the end, they probably end up thanking themselves more often than not. They probably think, I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. I haven't been given anything. I've done all this work on my own. Then you have those who believe in a, in a higher power, a God of some sort. But really, it's just, this is a false God, and more often than not, it's a God that they have created excuse me, that they've created in their own image. A God who, who affirms them, who doesn't chastise them when they step out of line. As the text says in Deuteronomy, the Lord disciplines those he loves. But they thank a God who has no discipline. That's not the God that we thank. That's not the God of Jesus Christ. Christians give thanks to the one true God, the creator of heaven and earth, the God who was made flesh in Jesus Christ, the God who lived a perfect life, died, rose again, and ascended into heaven, and is sitting at the right hand of God, the God who sacrificed himself for his people, the God who gives us all good things, material things, spiritual things. We give thanks to God who was made flesh in Christ Jesus just like the one leper, the Samaritan leper, who returned to the feet of Jesus. And that brings me to where? The nine probably continued to the temple. And I assume they gave thanks there. 
They didn't have to. There's nothing in the law of Moses that requires them to give thanks for being cleansed. All they have to do is show themselves to the priest. And the priest says, you're healed. Go on your way. So where did they go to give thanks? I'm, I'm not sure. And when I asked myself, where does the wider culture go to give thanks? That was my answer. I'm not sure. Do they have a place where they can go, where they can point to and say, this is where I go to give thanks? If they give thanks to any, any, if they go anywhere to give thanks other than where God has promised to be, they're in the wrong place. Christians, on the other hand, you, dear brothers and sisters, I said earlier during communion, we give thanks at all times and in all places. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. We give thanks to God no matter where we are, at home, while we're praying, in our cars, at the grocery store, changing the baby's diaper, going for a walk, it doesn't matter where we are, we give thanks to our God. But, but, there is one place where we know we can go. One place where we are sure to go, to be at the feet of Jesus, just like the Samaritan leper. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am also. When we gather together, we are the body of Christ. When we gather together, Christ is here with us. When we gather together as a community, as a church, we are at the feet of Jesus. God has promised, Christ has promised to be here with us. And he has promised to be here with us. In the Lord's Supper, the true body and blood of Jesus Christ, we received him in our mouths. This is sometimes called the Eucharist, and Eucharist is a Greek word which literally means to give thanks. Jesus promised to be found among his people, and he promised to be found in his supper. This is where we come to give thanks to the Lord our God. This is where he has promised to be found. And that leads me into when. When do we give thanks? Of course, at all time and in all places. But when we are gathered together, we give thanks as a community, as a church. We raise our voices in praise, in song, in thanksgiving to the Lord our God for the many gifts that he has given us. With our every action, we give thanks to God. Everything that we do is an act of thanksgiving. Where does the wider culture, when does the wider culture give thanks? Again, I'm not sure. Thanksgiving Day, I guess. When they receive something from somebody, they give thanks. I don't know, but I do know when we are together, we give thanks. When we are with Jesus, when we are with each other, we give thanks to our God. And so we've covered who, what, where, and when brings us to why. Why do we give thanks? As I said earlier, we've all got something to be thankful for. All of us have something to be thankful for, even the unbeliever. The nine lepers were healed. They had something to be thankful for. But the one, the one, had something much greater to be thankful for. He had something much greater than a healed body. Verse 19, rise and go your way. Your faith has saved you. Your faith has saved you. Jesus does so much more than heal. He does so much more than salve. Jesus saves. The one leper knew that. 
He knew that he had been saved rather than just salved. I've talked a lot about the ten lepers, the nine and the one, but this text, this text is all about Jesus. This is all about what Jesus does for his people. In our text, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem for the most important event that's ever happened in the history of mankind. He knows where he's going and he knows why he's going there. But on his way, he stops to salve and he stops to save. But when he gets to Jerusalem, when he faces that cross, he faces that suffering, he faces that pain, he faces that disease which no one can overcome, which cannot be healed. Death. And Jesus overcomes even that. Jesus overcomes death. And through his death comes your salve. Through his death comes your salvation. On the cross, he took the disease that we're all born into, that infests every single one of us. The leprosy that lives in us, he took that on himself. He took our sin. He took your sin on himself. And in exchange, he gave you his righteousness. He gave you his holiness. So that when the Father sees you, he no longer sees that leprosy. He no longer sees that sin. He sees the spotless Lamb, the Lamb who was slain. Jesus went to the cross and took your sin, your leprosy on himself. He did it for you. That is why we give thanks. That is why we give thanks to God, for God. It's why we give thanks to Jesus, for Jesus. Rise and go your way. Your faith has saved you, dear brothers and sisters. In the name of Jesus, amen.